Yesterday, as I drove on the turnpike amongst the beautiful shades of green, there were bright, fresh red buds that had volunteered. On wind and wing, they had been planted, and they changed the landscape dramatically. Beautiful volunteers. At this time, if you are an adult that has given your leadership to the youth in Sunday school, youth group, or small groups, would you please stand and remain standing? Any adults that have helped in the last year? And if you are an adult has given your time and resources to our youth by your giving of supplies, food, drink, transportation, and prayers, would you also please stand? We are grateful for your time and your talents, and we give you our thanks. With joyful hearts we come before you, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the lesson from Acts that Megan read, the apostles certainly seem to have a death wish. In the wake of the resurrection full of the Holy Spirit, they are teaching and preaching and healing and they are confronted by the temple authorities, the high priest, and the Sanhedrin. So the disciples are imprisoned, released, imprisoned, set free, questioned, threatened with stoning, and then saved again, this time by the wise advice of Gamaliel, a respected Jewish teacher who suggested from the scripture to keep away from these men and let them alone because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. Or, if this isn't God's stuff, it won't work out anyway. But if it is God's stuff, let's not get in the way. Gamaliel is the character of grace in this story. We need these, these characters of grace. Some may be related to us and some not. We need a variety of connections to make it work. Characters of grace are the trusted and very savvy people, many who are a little bit farther along in the journey that you are, and they will help you answer your questions without answering your questions. In April of my senior year of college, about this time of year, I called one of my characters of grace. I called my dad. He was at his office in the middle of his work day. I called because there was this guy. And something told me to pay attention to this guy. So there were a lot of words coming from my side of the conversation, and they sounded something like this. And there were a lot of listening coming from the other end of the line. These characters of grace are like that. They are very careful, very active listeners. A few words can speak volumes, and a question or two will do the trick. I don't remember everything that was said. I remember saying that this guy was a carpenter. And that was surely significant, biblically speaking. Nor do I remember what was asked. But when I hung up the phone, yes, we used to do that. We used to hang up the receiver and not just push end. When I hung up the phone, I knew I was going to marry John Dell. So first, I better ask him out on a date, right? <laughs> Characters of grace. They listen. They help you to see and they help you to get in touch with yourself. They give you a framework to allow you to come to and own your own answers. This was during my time at Bethel College. Go Threshers. Any Threshers in the house? Yeah, there were a few in early service. And certainly that's a shout out, but not to one place or another, but to the mindful choices that we make concerning where and with whom we spend our time. No matter where we are in the journey, where we invest our physical beings, our resources, 
our time, our money, our hearts, our emotional energy, where we invest and what we choose to invest in and with whom will have great influence on the goodness that we project into our future. So, character of grace, Gamaliel. He protects the disciples with his projection of possibility. He protects the disciples with his projection of possibility. He says, leave it to God here. Leave it to God here. Let the higher authority remain the higher authority. And the apostles claim that higher authority. Answering to a higher authority, being a resurrected people, isn't a one-day experience. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. And yet, here you are, again. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you here today. Today we are also celebrating our youth. Do you notice the young and beautiful faces serving today? Some greeted you. Others are sharing their voices in song and word. Some will serve as ushers, and some will serve you communion. Today, they are acting on belief in and love for a higher authority. Well, I'm actually the new kid on the block with these guys, but recently I was invited to the barbecue. You didn't miss anything. But invited to barbecue simply means they think you're okay. You've been invited in. In the last 54 days, I've done a lot of things for the first time. And during these days, I spent a significant amount of time in fellowship and study and prayer with one group of people. They are very kind and thoughtful and funny. They care for each other. They ask deep questions. They bring their friends. They put their hearts and hands to service. They share their joys and their frustrations with each other. And they look forward to being together. So, invited to the barbecue. First, eye contact. Then we'd spend enough time together that we could enjoy the gentle humor that comes from a journey of laughing about something that was said or happened a week or two before. Then a fist bump, then a high five, and then a hug, an embrace. I was invited in. Our youth know grace and hospitality, and they know how to love and serve each other and the world beyond our doors by the gift of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. There are youth here at Chapel Hill that know scripture by heart, who are excited about the stories in the Bible, who offer to pray. They invite their friends. I asked a couple of girls where they knew each other from, if it was school or dance or sports. Do you know what they told me? They said, we are church friends. These youth minister. They care for each other's tears and joys. They attend to the details of hospitality and communication. They take care of their church and their space. They smile with the joy of God's love. They serve those who have, and they serve those who have not. And they speak with kindness and good humor, and they listen with intent. They look out for each other, and they listen to each other, and they care for each other on the journey. I've seen and heard many good things. During a recent Sunday school lesson, we imagined what it would look like to be ambassadors of Christ in today's world. So small groups worked out the answers in an interview-style presentation. One question was, what do you admire about Jesus? An interviewee responded, nobody wears sandals like Jesus. Another one said, I love how Jesus rocks the man bun. And then when asked how they wanted to spend their lives, one said, I want to live for Christ every day. 
And another said, I want to share God's love. These are the words and actions of a resurrected people. These are children of God who love Jesus. This is the living God. It's been said that if you have a group of 12 young people who don't always understand your illustrations and one of them wants to betray you, you're doing all right. Jesus didn't call the one, two, three, well, whoever's here. Jesus called the 12. In youth Sunday school on April 7th, he called the 19. In Connections this just past Wednesday, he called the 14. And on Palm Sunday, when the youth prepped and served lunch and helped with an Easter egg hunt, Jesus called the 33. Do you see them? Do you see them? This is good. This is God's goodness. And we are invited to look and to see and to join what God is doing. In the gospel lesson that Aaron read for us, one of the young people who followed Jesus is known as Doubting Thomas, or you may have heard of Absent Thomas. Thomas wasn't there the first time Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. We don't know why, but it mattered to Thomas that he wasn't there. He wanted to see for himself. Eight days later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples. This time, Thomas was present. Jesus didn't say, too bad for you, Thomas, you missed the grand opening. Or, seriously, Thomas? The great reveal was last week. No. To all of his disciples, Jesus says, Peace be with you. And to Thomas, Jesus says, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hands into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Listen to me. Look at me. Touch me. And Thomas does. He listens, and he looks, and he touches. Thomas got what he asked for, and he reminds us of the cost of God's sacrifice. This is not cheap grace. We must look at and touch and embrace the wounds. We must learn to find God in the woundedness of our own lives. I love Thomas. Show me. I want to hear it for myself. I want to experience it. And I love Jesus. He messages Thomas and all of his disciples with words that are not of this world. We are constantly qualified in the words of the world. You aren't tall enough. You aren't short enough. You aren't young enough. You aren't old enough. You aren't thin enough. You aren't strong enough. You aren't relaxed enough. You aren't motivated enough. You aren't organized enough. You aren't creative enough. You aren't good enough. You aren't enough. Have you heard an aren't enough lately? Where the world proclaimed it, or maybe someone said it to you, or you read it, or you just heard it in your mind, and you listened to it. These are not God's words. These are not God's words. Instead of the words of the world which can drain you and leave you feeling empty and alone, Jesus messages Thomas with this. You are enough. You are enough. Jesus says, blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. He is saying you are blessed. You are sanctified and made ready. You are honored. You are made good with you when you embrace the resurrection, the good news, and live it in your life. Jesus says this in front of his disciples, but he is speaking to everyone that is not present, to those that are yet to come, to us. You are honored. 
You are made good. You are enough. God calls us to a new day, a new life, a new beginning. Every time we turn to the light and remember the goodness that we are called to embrace and live, like Thomas, God calls us to live like never before, to look as one who has never seen, to listen as one who has never heard, and to care as one who has never touched. Come close. Touch me, Jesus says. We are not an empty tomb people, alone. Resurrection is not just the empty tomb, but the remembrance of the cross. The journey, the suffering, the pain and death, the woundedness. And we don't have to go it alone. That is why God gives us each other to cling to. That is why God gives us characters of grace, people to be in relationship with, and community to walk the journey with. All of these things allow us a more full view of God's goodness. Jesus says, you are enough. Come close, Jesus says. Closer. Look. Listen. Touch me. Amen. Amen.